Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be solving some stoichiometry problems. Let's get into it. One of the things you're going to need in order to be successful at stoichiometry problems is an understanding of the conversion factors we'll be using. We've uh, already learned that one mole has a certain amount of atomic weight, and you get that number from the periodic table. You know, for oxygen, the atomic weight for oxygen is going to be, uh, you know, 16. If the atomic weight is for oxygen, the oxygen is O2, then it's 16 plus 16, which gives me 32. All right, so the atomic weight is going to come from the periodic table. So anytime I see atomic weight, I'm going to reference the periodic table. Okay, so anytime I have, say, one mole of oxygen, you can write down one mole of oxygen and followed by its weight in the bottom. And likewise, if I'm talking about oxygen, I could say one mole of oxygen will have a space of 22.4 liters, and I'm just going to continue to put down of oxygen. Okay, and likewise, I can reference one mole of oxygen has 6.02 times 10 to the third, and we're going to key in oxygen as a molecule, so therefore I'd reference that. So you do need to be familiar with all our conversion factors. We are introducing a new conversion factor. It's going to be called the mole ratio, and I'm going to put numbers here of moles of something over moles of something else. But that's coming at us today. So once again, in order to be successful today, you really need to have these conversion factors memorized and ready to use. Okay, guys, here's our first problem. Uh, stoichiometry is going to be used in order to take us from 3 grams of magnesium in a reaction. It's going to react with some oxygen that's in the air, and it's going to produce some magnesium oxide. This is a lab we worked on in class, all right? Silvery metal reacts with the oxygen in the air to produce a white powdery dust. Good chemical change took place. Right now, though, I'm going to ask you to try to quantify and tell me how much magnesium oxide I should make, given... 3 grams in the reaction. So let's set this up. I'm looking for a dimensional analysis problem. And even if you're kind of new to this, you should see on here that there are two givens. I'm giving you 3 grams of magnesium, and I'm also giving you the amount I'm looking for. I'm looking for grams of magnesium oxide. How much magnesium oxide did I place? And when we set the problem up, I always encourage you to set the problem up writing down the givens. So let's write down the first given. The first given is exactly 3.00 grams of magnesium. And it is important that you write down magnesium. It is important that you write down grams as well. I'm going to list on the other side of here the other given. The other given is what I call uh, where I'm going into. And this case is going to be grams. And the unit that I'm measuring is grams of magnesium oxide. So I'm looking at magnesium oxide. We do have to keep in mind what we're doing here. Okay, this problem is going to have uh, four steps involved, and that's the first one. All right, so here we go. This is what we're looking at, guys. So you've already written out the givens. Now the question is, how do I convert out of the givens? Okay, at this point, you have a couple choices for these blanks right here. Let me take you to these choices. The choices are going to come from this page right here. These are your choices, okay? And what I'm looking for here is that the given was 24... Oh, I'm sorry, what the given was 3.00 grams, and that was grams of magnesium. And so really what I'm keying on here, where in this page do I see the word grams? Okay, and you're going to see it in the atomic weight. So it's either going to be set up like this or something set up like this. But one thing we will have to realize is that any time I start off in grams, I need to divide and cancel out. And when I do so, I realize that one mole of Mg has a mass in the periodic table of 24.3 grams of Mg. One thing I really want to do is go slow here, okay? I want to explain to you that it is very important that you write this Mg here, okay? Very important that you write the Mg, that you write down Mg here. Not just grams, grams of what? Grams of magnesium, okay? We are going to see now that the grams of magnesium have canceled out. They're gone. The unit of measurement I'm in right now is moles of mg. But I want you to realize something. I am going into moles, I'm sorry, going into grams of mgo. So I need to leave magnesium behind and journey into magnesium oxide. Well, in order to do that, I need to convert out of magnesium. Well, if the unit is moles of magnesium right here. I need to see moles of mg right there. And we're not going to put a number there yet. We're not going to do that. We're just going to leave that, you know, holding on right here. I just want to take a look at the end of the problem. You see, the problem ends in grams of magnesium oxide, so therefore I should know that the unit that goes here is grams of magnesium oxide. And on the periodic table, I'll find out that magnesium has a weight of 24.3. On the periodic table, oxygen has a weight of 16. And when I add those two up, I end up with 40.3 grams. Now I tend to take everything to one decimal place. 
On the bottom of this, I'm going to have the conversion factor, one mole of MgO. And I'm going to write down one mole of MgO because that's what I'm dealing with. One mole of MgO weighs 40.3. Awesome. Well, anything that is down here must have been canceled out, and it must have canceled out the thing that was up here. So up here, we're going to put down moles MgO. Now, this is the only part that's kind of new here. This actually has a name, and that is the mole ratio. All right, that's something new for us here. That actually is nothing big. It actually comes from the numbers we used to balance the chemical reaction. These are called the coefficients. And I'm going to take this. For MgO, I'm going to reference 2. That big number, 2 moles of MgO, and the big number for Mg is 2 as well. 2 moles of MgO per 2 moles of Mg. And actually, the problem is kind of solved now. How do I solve this? I do 3 times 1 times 2 times 40.3 divided by 24.3 divided by 2, and divided by 1. Now, our answer will be rounded off to have three significant figures because that is what I referenced in my problem. Pause it, guys. Try and calculate this. And we get the answer of 4.98 grams of magnesium oxide was probably collected. So what do we do? Let's take a step back again. The first thing I realized that the problem was telling me that I was given 3 grams of magnesium, and I wanted to find out how many grams of magnesium oxide I'm going to produce. And I took those two givens, all right? There's a given here and a given here. And I put that in my problem, given one and given two over here. And that's the first thing I'm going to do, leave my problem. After that, I'm going to fill up conversion factors. These are nothing more than conversion factors that I'm going to use to convert from magnesium to magnesium oxide. I was given the unit of grams, therefore I chose one mole of magnesium weighing 24.3 grams. That was taken from the periodic table. I next had to convert out of moles of magnesium. I used the mole ratio. Mole ratio tells me there's two moles of magnesium oxide per two moles of magnesium. I got those numbers from the coefficients I used when I balanced the reaction. Lastly, I'm now in the unit moles of magnesium oxide. I need to convert into grams. Moles of magnesium oxide, I multiply by 40.3 grams of magnesium oxide, that number came from the periodic table, over one mole of MgO. And all along the way, I am canceling out units, moles of MgO. Moles of MgO, moles of MgO, and lastly, grams will match that answer over there. Grams. Okay? This number was rounded to have three significant figures, just like the initial given. Okay, guys, let's take a, take a look at another question here. Okay? How many grams of oxygen react with three grams of magnesium? All right? Most of these problems will be expressed to you in word problems. So how many grams? Okay, so I'm looking for blank number of grams. How many grams of oxygen react with 3 grams of magnesium? So I'm giving you here, once again, another quantity, 3 grams of magnesium. And we're going to be looking at the same reaction again, but I just wanted to express the question in words. So we're looking at 3 grams of magnesium as my given, and I want to find out how many grams of oxygen will react with it. So let's start off again. I'm just going to label this 3.00 grams of magnesium, and I want to find out how many grams of oxygen I will need in order to react it. So I've given you two givens. Why don't you start the problem off, see how much you can do by yourself, okay? Okay, I'm going to start off by writing 3.00 grams of magnesium, and I'm going to convert out of it pretty soon. And the problem has an ending of not grams of magnesium oxide like last time. This one has the grams of oxygen. And that's specifically grams of O2. Now, because it ends in grams of O2, I know one thing is that I'm going to put down grams of O2 right here. And I'm going to put down one mole of O2 on the bottom. And one mole of O2 on the periodic table, well, each oxygen weighs 16, and you have two oxygens, so that's 16, and another 16. I have 32 grams of oxygen in one mole. Well, if the unit mole appears down at the bottom, that means it must have canceled out something that was previously on top, because everything cancels out diagonally going in that direction. So I must be looking at the unit mole of O2 up there. Let's go to the beginning of the problem. The problem starts off in grams of magnesium. So therefore, the conversion factor I will use is one mole of mg, and I'm going to choose the atomic weight, 24.3 grams of magnesium. Keep attention to the element that we're in. We're in the element magnesium right now. We are going to be transferring to the element oxygen. Well, grams of magnesium have been canceled out. 
Everything cancels out diagonally downward. Likewise, I need to get rid of mole of mg. I'm going to cancel that down this way. So whatever I do, I must see mole of mg at the bottom. Doing so, I now need to get some numbers here. And this is the point where I look at the period, not the periodic table, so I look at the reaction, and I key in on the coefficients that I use to balance them. For magnesium, the big number is 2, and the coefficient for oxygen is 1. How many grams of oxygen will I need? Well, let's multiply. 3 times 32, divided by 24.3, and divided by 2, and the answer ends up being 1.98 grams of oxygen is what I need. The problem, you know, success in this problem is one of the keys is establishing your givens. Establishing your givens. That kind of assures me that I'm going to stay in magnesium and I'm going to convert into magnesium. I'm sorry, I'm going to convert into oxygen. So having them in place does help us out quite a bit. One thing you're going to notice, okay, one thing you're going to notice is that this is magnesium. Well, it's grams of magnesium, but it's magnesium. This is still magnesium as well. And you're going to notice this still deals with magnesium too. Now let's move on though. We still see magnesium over here. And you're going to see magnesium traditionally in these places. And it's not just magnesium. You're going to see the element that you start with in these places. And likewise, we're going into the unit oxygen. And you're going to see the unit oxygen or the element oxygen right there. You're also going to see it right there. You're going to see it right here and you're also going to see it right here. All right, so these are the places you're familiar with now. Whenever I'm converting from an element, I'll see that element in the first four boxes. And likewise, I'll see the next element in the next four boxes. And it kind of helps you keep track of your elements. The last problem we're going to look at today is this. Okay, It's not expressed in words. It's simply expressed in, uh, in a chemical formula here. And what I want to know is... How many grams of H2 will I need in order to make 20 grams of H2O? Now, this problem could also be solved with how many grams of oxygen, too. But just for the sake of cutting down on the length of this video, we're not going to solve for this. We're simply going to find out how many grams of H2 will I need in order to make H2O, specifically 20 grams of H2O. So try and solve this, guys. The first thing I'm going to do is write down 20 grams of H2O as a given. Okay? And I'm also going to go to the other side and write down blank grams of H2. Okay? I'm literally going to use stoichiometry and dimensional analysis to convert from 20 grams of H2O into, gra 20, into grams of H2. You know, there's a variety of ways to solve this problem that's already started. Let's just start this way. I'm starting out in grams of H2O. Let's use the conversion factor for one mole of H2O is the weight of H2O on the periodic table. Now, let's just go down here for a second. O weighs 16, and each H weighs 1. So the mass of H2O is going to be 18 grams of H2O per 1 mole of H2O. Awesome. I am now out of grams of H2O. I'm in the unit mole of H2O. We're going to use that new step called the mole ratio. In the mole ratio, I have moles of H2O on the bottom. How many moles of H2O? Two moles of H2O. I am now going to use this now to convert into moles of H2. From the reaction, I say I have two moles of H2. It's a two to two ratio. Now moles of H2O are removed. I'm now moles of H2. Let's convert now into grams. Moles to grams is an easy one because in one mole of H2, I will have two grams of H2. And now a quick little calculation will tell me how many grams of H2 I will need in order to make 20 grams of H2O. And what we calculate is 2.22 grams of H2. Now if I have 20 grams of H2O, that tells me the remaining mass must come from oxygen. And we can use this process to solve that too, but for the time being, I'm kind of happy with our ending here. Let's take a look at what we've done. Okay, we started off with H2O. And I converted my grams of H2O into moles of H2O. And you'll notice I'm still in H2O. And that was 18 grams per one mole. 
I then used the mole ratio to convert out of H2O, and I converted it into H2. When I converted it to H2, there was two moles of H2 that I got from the, the balanced chemical equation. I then continued converting into grams of H2 by dividing by one mole of H2. And lastly, I find myself in the answer of grams of H2. So there is a little bit of repetition in the problem, and if you can see the repetition, it's going to help you solve these problems. Okay, guys, that's all the time we have today. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time where we do some more stoichiometry problems.